All right, so all of the methods that we've just shown, right? 1A, 1B, 1C, they relied on proving that this um, imaginary axis is tangent, okay? So is there a way to do this else, you know, without relying on that fact? And the answer is definitely yes, okay? So I'm going to um, pull over into Desmos for a second. I hope the thing I drew before is going to still be there. Um, I'm going to use the fact that if we go back to part one, um, we showed that this angle up here is pi on three, right? And pi on 360 degrees is handy because it's the angle in, um, it's one of the angles in an equilateral triangle. In fact, all the angles in an equilateral triangle are pi on 3. And remember, Z is, it can move all the way along this major arc. So what I can do is I can move Z somewhere else to form a, a triangle ABZ that is equilateral and equilateral triangles are so nice like things are equal um, you've got perpendicular bisectors the logic just falls out very neatly because you've made things nice and simple you've you've gained symmetry and symmetry can be used to make a whole bunch of different arguments that are very convenient okay so that's what I'm going to do so follow, follow along with me right. so what we're looking at here, here is a representation of what we had before, but what I want you to notice is that point up there, um, I think it's, it's Z is the movable point, right? We can reposition it so that if I move it over, I'll move S like that. If I move it over to here, you can see, oh, whoopsie daisy, let's try and go, whoops. I'm so uncoordinated, I've got stubby fingers. Um, that'll just have to do. You can see that looks pretty equilateral, right? It's still pi on three up there in the corner, but what it creates is an additional pi on three in the bottom, in the left-hand side and uh, in the bottom right-hand side, okay? And so what I can do is I can create a new diagram um, that has an equilateral triangle in it rather than the original weirdo sideways triangle. Um, and from there I can reason, okay? I wanna find out what that point is, where that particular Z is, uh, and then I can do some reasoning from there. Okay, so let's come back to our original diagram. This is what things look like now, okay? You can see what I've created is um, this equilateral triangle here. So I'm gonna call that AB. P, um, and then in order to find where P is, because I'm saying that this thing is equilateral, right? What that means is all of the lengths of the sides are equal, equilateral. So a way that I can find it is by saying, if this length here, AB, is four, then BP will also be four, and AP will also be four. So a way that I can determine the location of that point is by saying, if I have a circle centered at B with the appropriate radius, right? With, which is four in this case. And I have another center, uh, sorry, another circle centered at A, which also has the same radius, right? So this is a radius of four. Then at the point where they intersect, um, you're gonna have a distance of four here, a distance of four here. We already know that AB is four. That creates the equilateral triangle. So I want you to take a moment, have a think for a minute. I'm gonna ask you to write this on your own page. It's a bit awkward to type, so I won't make you do it. But I'm gonna give you 30 seconds to think. What are the equations of these two dotted gray circles that I'm talking about, right? I know where the center is. I've said I want to have a radius of four here and here to create this equilateral triangle. So what will the equations of these two circles be? Because then I can solve them simultaneously and find out where P is supposed to be. Take a moment, have a think. You know the center? You know the radius? Uh, the radius, radii are the same actually. So I hope you came up with something a bit like this, right? Um, this down here, this one is x minus two root three. So it's centered at b, you see that? Uh, and it's y squared because I haven't moved anywhere vertically. And then you've just got r squared on the right hand side, which we already determined is gonna be four squared. So there's circle one, I'll just label that as such. This is circle one. And then you've got circle two over here and um, I've, not moved horizontally, you can see it's on the imaginary axis. Um, I've moved up two units, so that's why I'm y minus two all squared, and then the same radius that you can see there on the right-hand side. I'm gonna say they intersect at P, and I'm up here in the first quadrant, so you can see I'm just going to say, I'm gonna restrict X and Y to both being positive, okay? Now from here, what do I need to do? I'm trying to find where that point P is. It's the particular Z that gives me an equilateral triangle. So all I need to do is solve simultaneously. I know it looks like it's gonna be a mess because you're like, ugh, gross, all of this stuff to expand. But because your circles are so alike, um, you're gonna get X squareds and Y squareds canceling, right? And you can see them there highlighted in red and purple down below. So once they cancel, um, you end up with a linear equation because you've just got some constants, you've got some X's and Y's, but no X squareds and no Y squareds, right? So that eventually lands you here. Now, I just want you to look at this for a moment. 
y equals square root of 3x minus 2. Remember what we were trying to do? It was I'm trying to find where that point p is up there. But surprisingly, I have not found out the coordinates of anything, an x equals and a y equals. In fact, I've found a line. What is that line? And the answer is, it's actually um, where the two points of intersection are. Think about this, right? If you have two circles like this, here's circle one, here's circle two. There is not just one point P where the two circles intersect. You could say there's a P1 and a P2 where they intersect. And what we've found is the line along which P1 and P2 sit. It's gonna be this line in here, okay? So essentially what we've got, I'll put it in here, is a line that looks, think about this, right? Uh, it's root three X, so think about the gradient, and then it's minus two. I've actually already worked this out, so I know it's gonna be this line here, and if I wrapped around this circle all the way over here, you'd find another point of intersection somewhere down here, okay? Um, I can't actually show you the full circles because this diagram that they've given us is so off scale that my circles are to scale and so you actually would get a misleading, an misleading answer if I showed you them the full thing. But don't worry, I'll come back to Desmos to show you what the diagram really should look like, okay? So what do I do with this? Uh, I wanna find a single point P, not a P1 and a P2. So all I need to do is take that and um, substitute it back into the equation to find um, some appropriate values so long as I've got my restriction, right? For X and Y being greater than zero. So here's the way that I've unfolded it. Um, I wanna pick a, an equation that's easy to go back into, so either one or two. One has some gross thirds in it, so I'm gonna put it straight back into two. Um, you can see that that gives me this. So I've just substituted, you can see there's the x squared and here's the y right there, minus two, all squared. So that's where that result just flops into there. So you can follow that right there. Okay, and from here you can see I'm just going to get a quadratic in X even before you expand things out Once you've got that quadratic in X It'll have the two solutions which represent P1 and P2 and then we can find which is the appropriate one By using the restrictions that I placed on X and Y earlier namely that they have to be both positive to get this thing up in the first quadrant Okay, so once you go ahead and solve that like I said you end up with this quadratic um, I've just sort of simplified here. This all expands um, you get this which um, you can see it's because these constant terms are just going to cancel out with each other um, and then from there um, you get this you can you know divide through simplify things and then I'm about to factorize or I have rather factorized here okay now owing to my restriction that x has to be positive one of the solutions out of here is x equals zero but I'm not interested in that this point p that I've drawn here clearly doesn't have an x value a real value a real component I should say a real part of zero it's over here in the first quadrant so therefore I can exclude it I can say hey X is greater than zero, you can disregard that X equals zero solution. So that just gives me X equals two root three only. So what does that tell you, two root three? Well, that tells you that this thing here is two root three units horizontally moved over, okay? I can use that X equals two root three to then find um, Y, uh, because I just substitute that into, I guess, this equation up here. Um, put in the two root three there and it simplifies out very easily. Um, two root three times root three is just equal to six. So you get four. Um, so P is at this point up here, two root three plus four I. So let me just put that back on my diagram. Two root three plus four I, okay? Now you'll say, Mr. Wu, Great, we've just shown we have this equilateral triangle and I've found the points of it. I know where these other points are as well, so that's great. But what do I do with this? Um, there's a bunch of different things you could do, but my favorite way is taking advantage of a really nice geometric property that actually relates to physics, right? I'm trying to find the center of the circle. That's the whole point of this question. But because I've inscribed an equilateral triangle in, inside this circle, um, the center of the circle will be the same as the center of the triangle, right? Now when I say center, there are actually very diff a variety of different ways to talk about the center of the triangle. In the same way as when you talk about the center of a data set, you could say, oh, do you mean the mean or the median or the mode? Um, even when I say mean, it's like, do you mean the arithmetic mean or the geometric mean or the harmonic mean? That's a bit sneaky. The harmonic mean is not in the syllabus. So if you're like, Mr. Wu, I've never heard of that before. Don't worry, you can look it up though, it's quite cool. 
The question that you have to ask is, which center is actually relevant? Um, and it's going to be this center right here, which is actually the, um, the center of mass of, the, um, of this triangle here. Um, it looks a little bit askew because the, this di their diagram is not very good, but I've got a, a more fixed up diagram, which you'll see in a second. Um, if you're a physics student, you might call the center of mass the barycenter, um, but in mathematics, we would call this the centroid. The centroid of a triangle can just be found by averaging out the coordinates of the three vertices. And once you do that, bam, the center is done. And arithmetic mean is very easy to calculate, excuse me, once you have all of these coordinates which we've just determined, okay? So, how do we find the centroid? Let's just follow the logic here. Um, the center of the circle is at the centroid, that's what I just stated, and if you were reasoning this through, you'd have to include that in your proof. And I can find the coordinates by taking that arithmetic mean. So, the arithmetic mean is just add them all up, and then divide, right? So you can see here, I'm gonna do that for the x-coordinates. So I know the x-coordinates are going to be um, zero here. This is two root three, and you can see I found that this is two root three, and you can see how bad the diagram is. Like these should actually be vertically above one, one another, but they're not because the diagram is askew. Um, so I'll show you on my fixed diagram what it should look like. So I've got zero, two root three, and two root three. I add them up and I divide by Three, and as you can see, that's a familiar number because we already know what the coordinates of the center are. Um, you do the same thing for y. So you're gonna have um, two i, zero, and four i, right? Four i is the y, the imaginary part of the number we just found. Um, you're gonna get six i in here, you divide by three and get two i, so bam, there's the center. And because you know, we reasoned earlier that you're gonna be horizontally across, I can say by comparing um, with the coordinates of a, um, this, is going to be just horizontally displaced. I didn't have to prove anything to do with the tangent. I've just found these coordinates by virtue of this other reasoning that had nothing to do with the tangent. It just had to do with this equilateral triangle. So that gives you the radius because you're off by that distance from 2i. Okay, so um, I said that I would show you a proper diagram. This is a proper diagram. This is actually to scale. So you can see here, there is point P, which we found at uh, 2 root 3 plus 4i, and that's why it is vertically above this original point, uh, B, which is at 2 root 3, and of course you've got A, which is here at 2i. So you can see it's, it's, it's much taller, actually, than the original diagram they provided us, and that's why things are kind of were skewed on their version. And there's the center, the centroid, as we just found.